Super Bad Industries. Welcome back to my channel. Well, I'm going to cook with me today. I'm wearing the same shirt because I'm making two videos today, which is a record for me because usually I get anxiety and I can't handle it. barely handle one lately. Anyway, I thought a few of you commented that you'd like cook with me. Tonight I want to make, uh, I've been trying to think of ways to stretch meat. You know, like there's a lot of cuisines that do that. Um, and ours is one of them with rice. But I've been hungry for meatballs and gravy. I have an old, old video of meatball, southern meatball stew. I'm not quite sure what this was going to be yet, but I thought I'd turn the camera on and then we could cook together and uh, just hopefully come up with a great dish. So let's get started. Okay, y'all have seen me make meatballs several times. Now this is a less than two pounds. It's probably about one and a half pounds. Uh, I have my seasonings in here, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and I, I bought some granulated onion and I think I like it better. And uh, one egg, and I wanna make sure that they stay together. And this is sauteed onion, jalapeno, and a little garlic, not much, just a little bit. You wanna let it cool off just a pinch. But this is a secret to have juicy meatballs. This ground beef is ground sirloin, it's 90-10. It's my favorite blend. I like also like 8515, but 9010 is really my favorite. It's got just a little bit of fat in it. I'm going to put this on my mixer to mix it. And then we'll measure out the meatballs with a cookie scoop. So I'm gonna mix this up and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I mixed them. And if you, I forgot to say the most important ingredient is uh, Worcestershire sauce. That's what I always put in my meatballs. But this is what it looks like. And uh, I'm going to use this little scooper. And see how, hopefully, they stay together. This is also a good way, if you want to freeze meatballs, you just put them on your sheet pan. And when they get frozen, just put them in a Ziploc bag. And then you have your own homemade meatballs. And these are pretty basic, so you could probably use them in whatever kind of dish you want. Well, not whatever, any kind, but you could make spaghetti with them or... And my... I'm not shaping them perfectly, I'm just... You can make bigger ones if you want to. Mine will be all the same size. <clears throat> so I'm going to continue doing this, and then we'll get started cooking. Okay, I put a little canola oil in here because sometimes it sticks. And I have to dump some of this oil out. But here's the meatballs that made. I'm going to add a little extra ingredients to stretch it even further. But uh, I'm going to start browning these. I'm going to put it on medium high. Because I don't want I don't want to cook them too hard. Because they're gonna also cook in the sauce. And I don't want them to fall apart, so I want them to just sear on one side. But they smell good already. And I have all the ingredients to to try to make a quick quick what I wanna say, brown rice and gravy. Sometimes with ground beef, it's harder to get that good, good beef flavor. So sometimes you need a little beef bouillon, beef stock, just a, just extra. Just you keep going until you find what you like. That's what we do anyway. But I probably put a little bit too much oil in here. They smell good. I could eat them just like this, really. I mean, cooked. <laughs> I have a couple of potatoes I need to use. I have some shredded carrots that I need to use. I didn't organize them that well. You gotta be careful when you try to scoot them over. They don't fall apart a little bit. I need a little spoon. But we will fit them all in here. If you're not in a hurry, you can do it in batches. I haven't made this in so long. 
and it's fun to make. Ella's not, her, she's, she doesn't love meatballs, but she will eat them, especially if they have spaghetti sauce on them. So I'm going to cook these lumps here on one side. In the meantime, I'm going to slice the potato. I'm going to do it thin so it cooks really quickly. So I'll be back when I'm ready to turn these over. Remember, don't cook it on too hot. Oh, they're, they'll burn on the outside and be raw on the inside. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I'm gonna flip them. I'm eating a raw potato, I apologize. I don't usually do that, but I wanted to make, taste it. It's, di it's a different kind than I normally use. You can see they're not sticking if we let them sear on Just kind of like, like. Chicken is the same way. Once it's seared, it comes up a lot easier. Pretty, pretty full, so I have to be careful. You can use tongs if you want to. I like this little spoon. Kind of. I hope you can, you can see the pot really well. See how they turn them brown. I made them smaller so they'll stretch further. We used some of the meat last night, or like, uh, I think we made spaghetti and meatballs, and it was delicious. Okay. And that only took less than, no, probably about five minutes. Now, this does not look like potatoes that go in the stew, but this is how I ended up cutting them so they're quick, cook fast. You can pork with your potatoes also if you didn't want to wait. And I have these I need to use. I usually like to use these in Chinese food. But I'm going to use some onion, celery, garlic. Anyway, I'll show you. But uh, they just need a couple more minutes and then I'm going to take them, pull them out. So we're pulling the meatballs out now. And I turn my fire off because I don't want to burn my drippings. Because uh, it will leave you a little bit of flavor if you have some drippings. My meatballs are falling apart a little bit. And that's probably because I put them together really, really, really quickly. <clears throat> so I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to take some of this oil out very carefully with help. And uh, then I'll be back. Some of the meat stuck right here. And we poured all the. I'm going to. You can put olive oil if you want to. Or none, basically. But I'm going to try to de the pan with onions, celery, and uh, I'm going to add, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of this oil back in because it's got the flavor. And I'm going to turn my fire back on. This is, you don't want too much. But remember, the meat doesn't have much fat in it. Okay. And we did put them on a paper towel. This is some onion, purple and red. You know how I always like to mix it in uh, part of a jalapeno that I chopped. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add all of that. I love onions. Sorry, that's the rice pot. And I just love to cook with jalapenos. I just like the flavor they add. And if you take the seeds and the stems out, they're not really spicy. I'm gonna add a little bit of frozen celery. We freeze this because we don't use it as often. But I like to put it in certain gravy. So let's see if we can scrape the pan. I'm gonna have Line up too high. 
Yeah, I love adding a lot of onion. I love onion. And the longer you cook onion, and you caramelize, the more flavor they have, in my opinion. So you get a little sweet. I feel like to mix the red with the yellow, just adds a little sweetness. It just, it's, good, it's a good balance. I'm just gonna scrape it. It's coming right up, which is awesome. I'm so happy about that. And then my fire, I don't want to turn it too high. It'll burn my drippings. I mean, at next, I'm going to... You could skip these. These are going to get a little a little mushy, but I don't mind. It's going to add a little, just a little hint of flavor, a little sweetness. It's kind of like cleaning out your refrigerator stew. I don't usually put these, to be honest with you, but I kind of need to use them. Spare that. Now you have two options here. You could sprinkle, well, probably have a little bit more oil. Sprinkle a little flour, cook your flour, and then add your beef stock, and it would thicken it up. It'd be a thick sauce. Sometimes, I like if I'm cooking potatoes, I like to cook it in a thinner sauce because I'm always in a hurry and I'm prone to make it stick or burn it. So I'm kind of not sure what I want to do at the moment. I forgot garlic. Most important thing. In this house, <laughs> so garlic always chop in advance. And we like a lot of garlic. It's not you can add as much as you like. We just like a lot. I'm just give that a stir. This smells wonderful already. It's gonna be delicious, I can tell. Is this flour right now or alright. So we're gonna we're gonna thicken it later. I'm going to add, I forgot what my next beef oh tomato paste. This is optional. I don't think tomato paste goes in everything. It does have a little richness. But I like to add my tomato paste while I'm cooking the onions. I kind of like to cook it down a little bit, brown a little bit. Take that raw flavor out. But this is something I do that new that I used to not do, but uh, that's kind of, Ella taught me that, to be honest with you. She just loves it. And it does add some good flavor. Now you can cook these in long, Longer if you want to. You can really get them caramelized. If you're not in a hurry, you can really take your time. The important thing is you keep stirring and keep stirring. And you can't do it on a high heat. Now, I like to use beef stock. And I use salted. So, I'm going to add, I'm going to turn my fire up a little bit before I add this. And you can even let the onions get a little sticky to the bottom before you add this. That also adds a little bit more flavor. And you know, everything I make uh, usually requires a lot of gravy. And I'm pretty good at it, so I'm going to add this. Well, it was, wasn't full, but it was almost full. Because I'm going to be cooking this down a little bit. Now I'm going to add my weird cut potatoes. Hopefully they cook fast. You could also add cut carrots if you wanted to. Potatoes also just, I know it's another carb and a lot of people don't eat carbs. We don't eat a lot of carbs sometimes and sometimes we do. It's really my fault. <laughs> That's a lot of potatoes. You could eat just this. So I'm going to bring this up to a boil and cook these until they get tender. That's why I cut them small. Anyway, oh, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add just a little bit of this also. And I'm also going to add, just to give it a little extra beef flavor, this. I need a spoon. And you gotta be careful because this is salty. But the potatoes, 
are gonna drink up a lot of the salt. This has a lot of flavor. And now we also, when we make a little stew or rice and gravy or whatever you want to call it, we like to add a little hot sauce. Louisiana hot sauce is our favorite. It adds a little tang. And it's not too hot, believe it or not. Sometimes, once I fix my plate and I have the rice, I even add more hot sauce. Depends on how late in the day it is. So now I'm gonna put the lid on and bring it up to a boil. And if I need more beef stock, I'll add it, or water. So that's it right now. We'll cook the potatoes and then we'll put the meatballs in later. I have to add one more thing. My Cajun seasoning, I love this stuff. If I can get it out. There, you don't want too much. Just a little. It just adds that extra special flavor. And it's not too salty. The potatoes are cooked and I took the lid off and I turned the fire down and uh, this burner, it's pretty hot. But I forgot something. I forgot that I like to, I have some fresh thyme, but I'm going to want to use dry. I love to add a little thyme, not the ground kind, if I can find it, sorry. Well, and parsley for sure. I do have fresh thyme. Oregano. Well, you don't have to have it. We tasted it. It's really good. I'm going to put my meatballs back in. I'm probably going to turn it a little lower because the, really the meatballs are, are cooked and they did fall apart a little bit, but let me tell you, we tasted them and they're delicious. This gravy is delicious. Now you could leave it thin if you wanted. Or you could thicken it with a little cornstarch slurry. I'm gonna see how it looks once I add the meat back in. I think these are the tiniest meatballs I've ever made. And I think tonight we're gonna have a little a side of canned peas. You don't really have to have anything, but here's the time my husband found it for me. Thank you. Thank you, husband. I just put a little bit in my hand and rub it in there. It just adds a lot of flavor, but not it's not too strong. And it's totally optional. I'm just gonna grab the meatballs with my hand. They're not hot anymore, so. And this is our favorite kind of peas. We drain them. Butter, salt, and pepper. Sometimes put honey, but it goes really well with a little meatball stew. I think I'll have to add a little bit more beef stock. Like I said, because we like a lot of gravy. And I'm so excited because if you just have the right ingredients and even when you're in a hurry, you can make a, a delicious gravy. Like I said, I like a lot of gravy, so. I'm kind of undecided, that's why I'm quiet. I apologize. I'm gonna add just a pinch more, so I'll be back. I'm gonna, I decided, I'm gonna add like just a heaping table, teaspoon, sorry, teaspoon of cornstarch, just a teaspoon. Because I don't want it too thick, but I want it to give it, just to give it a little bit more body. And I can say we probably made this meal in under 30 minutes. If you prep your ingredients ahead of time, like chop your onions, or if you buy one of those onion choppers, I've been thinking about that lately. Every, if, if everything's ready, then it doesn't take you too long to cook. And I don't wanna cook my meatballs too long because they might fall apart. I'm usually better at meatballs, but. See that digging it just a hair. So I'm gonna turn the fire off. 
but I'm also gonna take out the burner so it cools off faster. Cause it's almost my bedtime. No, really, I go to bed pretty early. So when we get our peas ready and our dish ready, we'll do a taste test and we tasted the gravy. It's, it's so good. You have to try it. Just make it up as you go along and or, or just follow my guide a little bit and it's really good. Here's dinner. See, this is a big way to stretch your meat. Y'all gave me a lot of gravy. It's my favorite. Well, if you I want it prettier. I kind of missed those spots right there, but it's okay. <laughs> if you want it prettier, you just put, or if you have more time, just put, uh, cut up whole carrots and you can put whole potatoes in here. But if you want something to quickly, cook quickly, then you could just, well, I was just cleaning out my fridge. And me and dad are kind of picky. We like our vegetables soft, so. It's so good. And the meatballs are, that sauteed onion and garlic in there, it just, mmm. I'm very pleased that I got this amount of flavor in such a short period of time. So I hope you enjoyed this cook with me. Hope you give a meatball still a try. Thank you so much for watching. And let me know if you like the video. And I'll, and I'll keep doing more cook with me. But thank you so much for watching. And I will see you soon. Bye. Bye.